I'm in the foothills of Melbourne's Dandenong Ranges in a suburb called The Basin. I'm visiting an intriguing garden with hundreds of native plants thriving on a quarter acre block. Even from out on the street, I can immediately tell that this is the home of an ardent Australian native plant lover. And today I get to meet its creator, Bev Fox. I really like the verge that you've got here. The nature strip is just lovely. Yes. Now these are really quite different, aren't they? Uh, yes, that's isotoma. Mm. I grow them from seed and it's just pot luck what colour comes up. I got a surprise when I saw that one was white. That's nice. Yeah. That's what nature does, does isn't it? it? Gives yes. you a surprise. surprise. Yeah. Yep. I like white in the garden. I do too. That looks really sensational. Nothing wrong with a paper daisy, is there? No, they're really good. It's a lovely entranceway to your house. That's good. Yeah. Bev, you've got a fantastic front garden, and I love the look of the trees Tree. from here. Yeah. That's a magnificent iron bark. And the peppermint gum. Birds love them particularly. Tell me what this is. Veronica, Arenaria. And do you just let that grow everywhere? Because it's yeah. here, there and everywhere. Yeah. Well, I do them from cutting, so I have lots of them. Well, I like the way they waft their way That's through the garden. Fun. What time do you take the cuttings? Autumn's a really good time for cuttings. Ah, there we go. So you're yeah. busy all year round, aren't yeah. you? there's always something to do. The garden was started in 1987, but I've pulled it to pieces in 2003, and it's really, apart from the big trees, all new since then. So it was a bare pallet? Pallet, yep. <laughs> yeah, it was a bare pallet. <laughs> and why did you revamp it? I lost my husband in 2000, my brother in 2001, and my mother in 2002. And in between all those, my two dogs died. And I just thought, I need something new in my life. And I decided a new garden would just be helpful. And it's what keeps me really happy all the time. And do you find that there's a solace in the garden? Yes. I think you get in your own happy place in a garden. Yes. I love it. Even when the birds are noisy. <laughs> <laughs> They're chattering away, aren't they? Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> From a bird's eye view, you can really appreciate the bushland that Bev has created. The variety and repetition of species in her garden gives a natural feel, which Bev hopes recreates the ambience of the Australian bush. Out in the back garden, it's quite shady and there are enticing curved paths made of gravel toppings. There's a large eucalyptus manifera casting cool shade over the many shrubs and pots. It's a very spacious backyard you've got, Bev, and it's filled with plants. Here in this back garden, I've layered it I've done very small things right along all the edges, then up to about a metre high and then a bit higher. The big tree at the back, I've cut the lower branches off to give these room to grow to keep it nice and bushy looking. It's good having that layered effect though, isn't it? Yes, it lets some light in and mm. it creates interest all, yeah. all year. I think it's a stroll garden. It's a garden to be in, not to sit back and look at. This is a beautiful looking native mint. This is one of my favourites, the prostranthra. I love that family of plants. This is later flowering than most of them. I also like the tamasia for its foliage more than its flowers. It's a great filler in a shady spot. I love the softness Soft. of the leaves. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a very amazing shaped leaf, isn't yeah. it? It's like yeah. an oak leaf. Oak leaf, mm. yeah. 
Bev's an avid plant collector and propagates from seeds and cuttings to fill up her garden. This is a piece of Westringia violets, guys. And is it an easy one to take cuttings off? Oh, it's a, it's easy. It's a little soft because of the time of the year. Mm. But I just strip the bottom leaves, yep. pull out the soft bit at the top, make sure that that's not got a little bit in it, dip it in the hormone. Yep. Clean pot, and this is two parts Koya and one part perlite. That's always a good mix. It's yep. nice for the roots to grow through, through easily, isn't yep. it? Yep. And um, just tap it a little bit to put a hole in and just pop it in there and press it down. Then put them in the glass house. This garden really celebrates the diversity of Australian native plants and shows what can be done if you're devoted to experimenting in the garden. Oh, the garden is my hobby in life. It's the thing that fills my time and I enjoy it. Going out and seeing the plants in the wild, I think is one of the greatest things to do. You think, oh, I can grow that at home and it's lovely, yeah.